Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5. After a three-day search in a Minnesota lake, officials confirmed they have recovered the body of a 24-year-old Moorhead man believed to have drowned. Family members confirmed the man's name is Abdi Majid Osman. They say he was kayaking, that his kayak flipped, and he didn't come back to the surface. Valley News Team's crime and safety reporter Bailey Hurley was the only reporter on scene when rescuers recovered him. He joins us live now with more. Bailey. Yeah, Andrea, I kind of want to paint a picture as to what unfolded here today. This morning when I was here, boats were scattered all around the shoreline here. There were some in the really deep water, some were much closer to shore here. They really had a lot of ground to cover because they didn't know exactly where he went under Saturday evening. But then it came around the 1 o'clock, 1.15 mark, and all of those boats really started clustering together. And while all of that was happening, a deputy with the Becker County Sheriff's Department gathered all of Osmond's friends and families that were here, uh, really camped out here for the last three days. And while I I couldn't hear what the deputy said. All of them, I mean, it was almost instant. All of them were just crying out and screaming in disbelief and devastation. And I got to speak with them later and they said, well, they knew that this was the likely outcome here today. They didn't really, they, they all had a lot of hope that there was going to be a different outcome. And so th it was a very tough pill to swallow, but they do say that they're very thankful that they finally have some closure. They wanted to thank the community in, of Detroit Lakes and all of the agencies that helped bring Abdi Majid Osman home today. Reporting live in Detroit Lakes, Bailey Hurley, Valley News Live. All right, thanks, Bailey, for that live report. A prank by an ex-employee at a Grand Forks dealership ended up costing him prison time and the dealership thousands of dollars in damages. Newly released video shows the moments that Joby Lunsky caused an explosion. Last week, Lunsky was sentenced to a year in prison in order to pay restitution to Ford Lithia. We'll show you more of this video and his interview with police on Valley News Live at 6. Authorities are investigating a fire that broke out at a business in downtown Monoman. It happened around 3.15 this morning at the Home and Fashion Store on the South 100 block of Main Street. Authorities say no one was hurt and they have not released the cause of the fire. After a wild weekend, it's nice to have some quiet weather, and I'm happy to report our weather team nailed it this weekend in predicting everything that came our way. Let's find out about this evening, how it looks with Hutch and your first alert forecast. Hey, Hutch. Yeah, we're excited, too, about some quiet weather to start the work week indeed. As we take a look at some video that was shared, with sometimes when you're out on the tractor, you see something that says, well, it is about time to wrap up, and a tornado on the ground would be one of them. Tara, thanks to you and to all of you who this weekend helped the storm team keep others ahead of the storms. It's very quiet for us. Temperatures 75 to 80 across the region. Here's your planner for tonight. It is a little on the breezy side. I expect temperatures to stay very comfortable, but cool quickly into the overnight hours into the 60s. Grand Forks likewise. A beautiful evening. 849, the time of your sunset. You know, we have to enjoy the quiet weather while we can. We do have more strong thunderstorm potential. I'll have details on that here in just a few moments. All right, sounds good. Thanks, Hutch. You bet. Authorities are now saying medical examiners found meth in the body of a three-year-old girl they say was abused by a man from Red Lake, Minnesota. 29-year-old Edward Fairbanks is facing four charges related to a June 8th incident. According to court documents, the three-year-old showed up at a Monoman Health Care Center with head trauma and several burn marks. Investigators say Fairbanks told authorities several different stories on how the child received those injuries, saying they didn't add up. Fairbanks was arrested last week. The child was life flighted to Fargo for emergency care. There's no word yet on her current condition. Authorities say charges are now being filed surrounding a man's death in Fargo. 25-year-old Larry Evans Jr. is charged with murder and terrorizing. And 31-year-old Jonathan Hunt is charged with accomplice to murder and terrorizing. The charges are related to the death investigation of 18-year-old Cameron Camacho. Last Tuesday, police were called to South Fargo around midnight because of a fight that started over the price of marijuana. Records state that both Hunt and Evans punched and hit Camacho with a baseball bat multiple times. Police say they have recovered Evans' car, but he remains on the loose. A 20-year-old man and two others are now facing criminal charges after the May 30th riot in downtown Fargo. 
Nikolai Westrom is facing six different charges after court documents say he damaged a dumpster in the middle of First Avenue North and surveillance video shows Westrom throwing rocks at officers. Also facing charges are 22-year-old Zachariah Vernon Koss and 23-year-old Vaimunga Claude. All three are formally charged. They were charged Friday. JL Beers reported over $18,000 in damages from the May 30th riot. A North Dakota man is dead after a motorcycle crash in Ottertail County. The Sheriff's Department says it happened around 2.45 this morning along County Highway 34, just west of Purim. Authorities say 30-year-old Douglas Hudson of Wapaton was driving down the highway on his motorcycle when he drove off the road. Officials say an investigation is ongoing to determine if alcohol was a factor. A man was injured after driving into a Moorhead gas station. It happened Sunday night around 8 o'clock at the Casey's in the 1700 block of 30th Avenue South. We don't yet know how badly the driver was injured. Police say it appears the man veered off 30th Avenue and smashed into the west side of the building. The gas station has some serious damage also. Fargo school leaders have given the green light for students to return to school, but using different approaches. The new normal starting this fall calls for hybrid learning. Valley News Team's Callie Hubbard is here in studio to explain what the plan is and what Moorhead is looking to do at this point. Callie? Andrea, Fargo has decided students in elementary, middle, and high school will start their year with Level 3 hybrid instruction. It's a part of the Fargo Smart Restart Plan. Schools will be open for all K-5 through students. Elementary students will be at school in person two to three days per week and do unscheduled online activities for two to three days per week. K-5 through schools will enforce social distancing and capacity will be restricted to 50 percent for students and staff. In September, the secondary school campuses will only allow one-third or one-half of the building's student population. And parents I spoke with today say they're worried that once their kids get used to the hybrid schedule, they may have to change things up if case numbers go up. A parent and teacher at Carl Ben Eilson Middle School pointed out several obstacles for his 9- and 13-year-olds as they gear up for school. And more details on the Fargo plan are expected September 2nd. Over in Moorhead, the district also has been hard at work putting together plans after Governor Tim Walz released re-entry guidance for schools. Today, they were able to get feedback from parents as they shared their in-person, distance, and hybrid learning models. They say they will have their full plan August 18th. Andrea? All right, Callie, thank you. For a breakdown of what's been done up to this point in the school districts, you can go to our VNL News app. In Minnesota, the Department of Health is reporting another 625 confirmed cases of COVID-19, along with three new deaths linked to the illnesses. In total, 1,660 have been attributed to the disease. Over 54,000 people are listed as recovered. In North Dakota, 117 cases are confirmed, along with another death. The death toll now sits at 113. The active case count is up to 1,129. The White House is still motivated to get a COVID-19 relief bill passed that includes direct payments to Americans and school funding. That's the word from White House Press Secretary speaking in the briefing room this afternoon. She's urging Democrats to return to the Hill for further negotiations, saying the, uh, the administration is working around the clock to deliver on its promise for enhanced unemployment. I can't pinpoint a timeline other than we'll be working around the clock and we encourage Democrats on the Hill uh, to come back. Secretary Mnuchin has said he's willing to review any proposal because the American people deserve better than the games and the partisanship they've seen from Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer and their Democrat colleagues. The press secretary went on to say that the president is working hard to ensure that direct payments are sent out to Americans. A massive motorcycle rally is underway in western South Dakota. As many as 250,000 people were expected in Sturgis for the small town's famed 10-day motorcycle rally. The annual event draws people from around the country, and this year is no exception, even with a pandemic. It's one of the largest public gatherings in the nation since the start of the outbreak. People attending the rally are encouraged, but not required, to wear face masks. With more people working from home, certain businesses aren't making money like they used to. We'll look at a couple that rely on people going to the office next on Valley News Live at 5.
Beautiful golfing weather out at the Dakota Magic Casino and elsewhere with temperatures 75 to 80 degrees for most areas today. We've gotten a fair amount of moisture this month. I'll have details on when our storms return to the valley next.